hello. If you're watching this on YouTube and you're watching this during the premiere or live stream, that means I'm actually there in the chat. So feel free to ask questions. I'm actually here. This is a pre recorded video. So I recorded it instead of just going live, but I will be there in the chat. And I'm using my live stream setup. I recently did a live stream and it froze. So I thought the next best thing to doing a live stream is maybe making the video first and then watching the video as it plays. So if you have any questions or anything, I will be hanging out in the chat. So this video is called Problems in the Theory of Functions of a Complex Variable. And it was written by L. Volkovsky, G. Luntz, and I. Aronovich. It was published by Mir Publishers, Moscow. So I'm a big fan of Mir Publishers because it's rare. And as a collector of math books, you know, collectors like rare things and Mir books are rare. Also, math books are a collectible that do more than just sit there. You can actually learn from them. So by collecting math books, you can learn a lot of math. So Mir Publishers is a publishing company or was, I'm not sure if it's still around. And here it tells you a little bit about them. Mir Publishers of Moscow publish Soviet scientific and technical literature in four languages, English, French, Spanish, and Arabic. So pretty cool. One thing I like about books from Mir Publishers is oftentimes you find things in them that um, are a little bit different. Here it talks a little bit about the book. This collection of problems in the theory of functions of a complex variable is mainly intended for students in departments of mathematics, mechanics, and physics, and for engineering courses with extra mathematics, but embraces a cycle of problems falling outside the normal syllabuses. Certain of these can serve as material for students pro student projects and as problems for course seminars. Right, so it's always a little bit different. Like uh, I have a differential equations book by Muir Publishers, and it's it's just a little bit different. It's got different explanations. You might have the same math, just a different way of presenting it. Oh, this is nice. Look at this book. Wow. I'm going to I'm going to take the dust jacket off. That must be the previous owner, 1980. Wow, that was a long time ago. And take the dust jacket off and be careful. Yeah, collecting math books is fun. Look at this. Wow. Oh, this is nice. So cool. By the way, if you're wondering why there why there are papers here, um, it's not for like uh, any type of like aesthetic effect or anything like that. It's because I have a light shining here and the light is really bright and it makes a horrible glare on this desk. So I have another desk that doesn't have the glare, but I'm, I'm, this setup is still pretty new. If you think this is a good recording setup, like if you like this video, let me know in the comments because um, this is different for me because I use both of my hands. So problems in the theory of functions of a complex variable. I just gotta, I just gotta smell it one second. I just gotta like, oh, I wish you could smell it through the microphone. I'm trying to emit the smell to you, but I can't do it. I don't have that much magical power. Marcel Newt's 1980. Yeah, let's take a look at the contents. Problems in the theory of functions of a complex variable. Translated from the Russian by Victor Schiffer. Good job, Victor. I can't imagine translating a math book. That is so insane. First published, 1972. Revised from the 1970 Russian edition. Oh, oh, oh. Before we look at the contents, I should mention something. Um, so the fact it's translated from Russian is kind of peculiar. This just occurred to me earlier today. And it's something that's obvious and you know, I don't know why it took me so long to realize it. So if you go to graduate school for mathematics and you want to get a PhD, a lot of schools, not all of them, but a lot of schools will require that you learn uh, one of the three, what they consider to be the scientific languages. And those are um, French, German, or Russian. I think some schools allow Chinese maybe, but Historically, those have been um, the languages that you have to learn. So I, th I think, for example, uh, at Notre Dame, uh, I believe that you have a year to pass the exam and to learn one of those languages. I, I don't recall. I don't recall if Notre Dame has that requirement. I'm pretty sure Princeton does. A lot of the really good schools require that you pass some type of test to indicate that you know you know one of those languages. And that's because a lot of important mathematics was published in French, German, and Russian. So it makes sense that you know we have these famous math books that were originally written in Russian. Um, these are you know pieces of history. Chapter one: Complex numbers and functions of a complex variable. 
Chapter two, conformal mappings connected with elementary functions. Go slowly here. There's some more topics, still a new recording setup. So a to practice integrals and power series. Hopefully you can see everything okay in the video. The Laurent series, singular points of single valued analytic functions, residues in their applications. All topics that you would see if you took an undergraduate course and say complex variables. You could do that at college in the US. If you signed up for it, you'd probably have to take like a calculus three class prior to taking it. Various series of functions, parametric integrals, wow. Infinite products, wow, entire and anamorphic functions. Cauchy type integrals, integral formulas of Poisson and Schwartz. Analytic continuation, what's well, a hard topic. Singularities of many character Riemann surfaces, wow. Informal mappings continued. Applications to mechanics and physics. Generalization of analytic functions. I, I just gotta smell it again, I'm sorry. I can smell it from where it is and I'm just gonna, oh, wow, wow, I love this. This is amazing. Let's read this together. The present book is meant primarily for the student of mechanomathematical and physico-mathematical departments. Wow, what a cool word. Of pedagogical and technical colleges with advanced programs in mathematics. Also includes a number of problems outside the standard curriculum, right? So you get extra stuff that's like not typically taught. We believe the text will also be used to advantage by students majoring in fluid dynamics, the theory of elasticity and electrical engineering. I mean, these books are so unique. This is why I love these mirror books. They're just so different. To acquire the necessary theoretical background, one should make a thorough study of relevant textbooks, such as the theory of functions of a complex variables by A. Svishnikov and A. Tikhonov. Your publishers, Moscow, 1971. All hints and solutions are given in the text. The most difficult problems marked with asterisks are solved in the last part of the book. Let's just take a look at some of the problems in this book. I'll just open up to a random page here. So here we go. Chapter two, conformal mappings connected with elementary functions. 193, find the entire linear function which maps a triangle with vertices at the points zero, one, and i onto a similar triangle of vertices zero, two, and one plus i. Cool, right? Oh, wow. What's 201, what's this? Find out into what the function w equals one over z minus z naught plus h transforms. And then it gives you some regions, the rectangular grid, wow, and then the polar grid. Cool, let's look at the answers. Yeah, it's just a, it's like it's like a problem book, like a problem book. Yeah, it looks like you have answers right to everything. Wow, even with even with graphs, look at this. Wow, this is just legendary. So cool. This is a great book, I think, for someone who wants just some math to do for fun, or maybe you're taking the course and you want some extra problems um, so that you can do better on your test. I mean, look at this. So it's it's a math book. It's basically a book of exercises with solutions. That's basically what it is, right? You're getting solutions to all of these problems. Let's see how many we have. Actually, let me just go to the last problem in the book and see if I can find where that is. Just wanna be careful with this copy because this is a very, very rare book. By the way, I'll leave a link in the description of this video in case um, you want to check out the book. I'll try to find the book. Hopefully I can. So look at that. All of that is answers. Look how thick that is. It's just answers and solutions. And there's, you know, they're all there. They're all there. That's just so awesome to me. What an amazing, what an amazing text. So there are 1,425 problems in this book. So you get 1,425 solve problems in the theory of functions of a complex variable with this masterpiece of a book. I mean, pretty cool. Um, it's just a lot of good mathematics in a book like this. And you're gonna get really interesting problems. I have a, a similar book on linear algebra. Um, I think it's called Problems in Linear Algebra. It's not by Mir. Um, some, someone else uh, wrote the book. And it also has, like, it has linear algebra problems, but it doesn't, uh, they're not, they're not like, a lot of them are like problems that you would normally see in a class, but a lot of them are like outside of what's usually taught. So that's one of the nice things about problem books is you find uh, interesting problems. 
actually have a series of books called Algebra Through Practice, which I should make a video on. Those are really cool. And that's like, it's kind of like this, but it has a lot less problems. This is pretty ridiculous. And it's got like abstract algebra, linear algebra, groups, you know, matrices. There's different books, like book one, book two, book three, book four, book five. There's six books. It's a six book series called Algebra Through Practice. I'll try to maybe do a video on that. I forgot about those. But problem books are fun. So this is a problem book in the theory of complex variables. So yeah, kind of cool. Um, again, I'll try to leave a link in the description so you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Um, this is still a fairly new recording setup. And again, if you're watching this video uh, during the premiere or during the live stream, whichever I do, I'm probably just going to do a premiere because it's easier to sync everything. Uh, I'm actually there in the chat, but you know, if, if you missed it, no big deal. I'll leave a comment. I'll check the comments. Anyways, until next time, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Good luck and take care.